what are some of the innovations and different uh, new um, its technologies that are coming up in order to improve this particular agriculture sector and right now uh, good afternoon Kelly bring us up to speed and what uh, is going on at this particular show well, a very good afternoon to you too, Kelvin. Uh, we are in the second day of the Nairobi International Trade Fair here at the Jamhuri Park. And so yesterday what we saw was uh, people were streaming in, people trying to set up. Uh, you know, you see a couple of schools, but today it's packed. In fact, where this, uh, the, the, the schools are parking their buses, you could think uh, will we fit there because the amount of kids around here and they are so happy we used to think that the fun in the show grounds are, uh, are far gone but no it's because we are we are grown and maybe we don't see the fun we see the business but the kids are still seeing the fun i see ice creams rolling around and you know people are making profit in the end of the day there is uh, <clears throat> of course the focus of of this particular show is agriculture and so any other person who is involved here if, be it in banking be it in, be it in any other sector the smes that are here the institutions that are here are all trying to fit in the value chain the agriculture value chain and so for today actually we want to focus our conversation because yesterday we did a lot of livestock today we are focusing our conversation on climate resilience and where else to start this conversation other than at kenya seeds stands because for them you know they do seeds they do uh, you know different type of seeds from different crops be it you know you are doing uh, you know cereals you are doing vegetables any type of seeds and can i tell you what without gas lighting anything, I think this is the most magnific magnificent, you know, stand based on the sizes of cabbages and kales and every other thing. It's just beautiful. But just to, start, uh, just to unpack this climate resilient conversation, I, ha I have a guest with me here. She's called Esther, but I'd like her to introduce herself more and tell us who she is and what she's doing here. Thank you very much. My name is Esther Cherop. I work for Kenya Seed Company and uh, Simlo which is our subsidiary here in Nairobi and uh, I'm currently in charge of wheat and other products but we are cross-cutting in terms of uh, operations taking care of the seeds across port right. yeah uh, now what uh, farmers are walking in right now uh, what would, would you like them to look at when they come to your stand uh, well we are happy and privileged to be present in this year's uh, international trade fair uh, Kenya seed and uh, similar seeds we are very key in this um, whole program and uh, we are happy that farmers are streaming in and uh, our mandate just to start off our mandate is to ensure there is uh, food security in this country and that is our biggest mandate uh, our task as an organization to ensure that seeds of, of assorted varieties starting from maize pasture uh, vegetables both of indigenous and exotic sunflower all kinds of uh, um, food crops uh, seeds are available of high quality. So we are here to showcase a number of uh, varieties, seed varieties from our assorted, uh, from our assortments, which is very, very huge in terms of portfolio. And farmers are appreciating uh, the fact that even in the wake of climate change, Kenya seed been able to position varieties that are resilient, that are able to adapt to this climatic change, which is very real and is affecting our farmers. So starting from May, starting uh, cabbages, we are really into, um, into, into this year's show, uh, trying to educate our farmers to enlighten them, trying to be able to impart some te uh, technologies that we have been able to develop that are quite recent, that are quite advanced, be able to address the issue of food security, which is our biggest mandate, and to be able to address the issue of climate change, even as we align ourselves to make sure that there is food everywhere in our households. Right. Yeah. And speaking about seeds and the quality of seeds, you've mentioned hybrid seeds. You know, what's interesting is if a farmer uh, walked in here and picked up hybrid seeds, they'd go plant it the way they want to plant it or the way they've been planting it and still get not so good results and come back complain. So what are the do's and don'ts if you get the hybrid seed? What do you do to get uh, almost the same uh, you know, quality as Kenya seed or just the same with the margin of error? Uh, thank you very much. Um, hybrid seeds, actually, this is the, the, the new frontier. We are telling our farmers to run away from farm seed seeds, to run away from uh, open pollinated varieties, if not all. But you are guaranteed of high yields, you are guaranteed of tolerant, disease tolerant and pest tolerant varieties once our farmers embrace hybrids. So they get more value, they get more benefits if they embrace fully 
hybrid seeds. And that is why we are here today to preach the gospel of hybrid. If we are to realize food security, if we are to realize sufficiency in terms of food from our household levels, it is important for us to emphasize the need of uh, hybrids. Those are improved seed varieties. And our maize right now we have transitioned fully into hybrids and we are taking care of all agroecological zones right from the lowland imagine like in kenya we have five eco zones we have the highland altitude we have the medium we have transitional we have lowland and dryland and right now even in our stand we'll be able to showcase all those varieties of maize so that farmers from across board they're taken care of and uh, when you come to cabbages we come to horticulture we have an assortment of our varieties of horticulture cabbages you can be able to appreciate what you're seeing here these are hybrid cabbages and looking at what our farmers need and looking at what the market needs because you're also talking about empowering them agribusiness wise it is important that they also look at it in terms of agribusiness perspective so we have varieties that are really fetching a lot of market a lot of money that transport to long distance market without the issues of perishability so our hybrids have been actually been positioned in line with our market needs and in line with what our farmers require so our research department which is very active it's really been working on to ensure that our products that are developed they are climate smart they are resilient and are able to address the needs of our farmers address the needs of our market so that our farmers are able to maximize in terms of food security and at the same time the agribusiness aspect talking about cabbages we also have the indigenous varieties you know, the nutrition is also very key. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, food security goes hand in hand with the nutrition. Yeah. So we want an empowered nation in terms of nutrition. So likewise, you're also complementing our products with the nutritional bit. Right. So we are telling our farmers, we're taking our, our Kenyan, our fellow Kenyans, to also make sure that they also balance their diet. Here we have an array of products that are quite indigenous, they're quite organic. Like the managus, we have the, the indigenous, we have the, the, the sucha, they call it, the other call it, we call it mito, we call it, uh, you know, saget, all those kinds of baskets, which is full of indigenous vegetables. You look at it, the skuma wiki, which is, you cannot miss in any basket. We have do, we have done it, a, I mean, a lot of uh, demonstration here, and farmers are appreciating, looking at the quality of the leaves that you're having, they'll be able to take care of their family, their needs. So, livestock, we are equally there. You know, quality milk also comes from quality pasture. Right. comes from quality fodder and Kenya seed has been rightly positioned to be able to address the needs of our animals, I mean our livestock farming. So you can be able to see on your extreme left, we have also an array full of baskets of fodder crops. So farmers have choices to make. When they come through, we are able to take them through, train them, educate them on good proper management of their crops so that they realize these beautiful crops that you're seeing here. Yeah, yeah quality feed uh, impacts uh, the milk production directly. Yeah? And you mentioned something before you talked about the quality of milk and, 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 the, and the livestock. You mentioned something about every other plate has kales or spinach. The paddock here I see is very small. It's as small as a, you know, a behind the kitchen type of, you know, farming, urban farming, you know. And then I've also seen inside the greenhouse there is the, you know, the stands, yeah. So how does someone utilize that, especially the urban farmer? And, uh, you know, does it go hand in hand with the seed? What types do you recommend and stuff like this? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you can see across our stand, we have also taken care of the urban farming, the urban farmer, the urbanite. You call it the urbanite technology. It's kind of an integrated. It takes care of any other material that are within our disposal. Look at the tire that is here, that you know our kids on the streets, they sometimes, I mean, in, in, in an estate they play around, you know, with them as, as, as a tool of, of, of their games. You know, that one has, we have seen the way you have converted that to be a farm. So, uh, you go to uh, the other section, you see those, the containers, after maybe you've utilized your water in a dispenser, that, that team, instead of throwing it anywhere, you can just put some soil, put some, you know, a mix of an, a media that can be able to support some, some, some cultivation. Right. So we... Right now we move on. The Cooperative Association of Small Miners in Narieda have demonstrated against the 